Hi, my name is Laura Johnson, and I am going to be giving a presentation today on schizophrenia based on what I learned in the DSM-5. Give me a moment while I share my screen, and I will go over the presentation with you. Okay, so again, I'm presenting on schizophrenia. Um, from what I learned in the DSM-5, and I'm doing it for our Human Services 1720 class, uh, co-occurring disorders. So let's talk about schizophrenia. What is it? Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder. It is, its cause is unknown. Um, psychotic disorders are a state of mind, are a state of severe mental illness that causes a person to lose touch with reality and have abnormal perceptions and thoughts, which causes changes in behavior. It comes from the Greek term schizo, which means to separate, split, to part, and the word phren, which means mind. Now the medical society uses phrenia, phrenia as a suffix, and they um, call that, uh, deem that meaning distorted mind or scattered mind, phrenia, scattered mind. Um, but we need to uh, make note that it is not a split personality disorder. Schizophrenia is not split personality. It affects how people think, feel, and behave. So there's five domains that need to be considered when diagnosing schizophrenia. They are delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking and speech, grossly disorganized organized motor behavior, including catatonia, and negative symptoms. So somebody needs to have at least two abnormalities in the following five domains. So let's break down the five domains. Delusions first. Um, it is a fixed belief. It's false. It's a fixed false belief that does not change even when present, presented with evidence proving otherwise. And delusions come in various themes, which we're going to discuss next. So there can be persecutory delusions. That is the belief that someone or some group is mistreating or spying on or attempting to harm them or someone they love. Um, they can, an example of this might be that the government is trying to frame them or that their neighbors are spying on them or that somebody's following them in a grocery store. Then we have somatic delusions. Um, the primary focus of these is on the physical, the physical body. So there's something um, that they're so set on physically that's wrong, that it, it, it just causes major distress and problems functioning. So examples of this might be that they are infested with parasites, say they have worms, or that they're giving off a foul odor. Um, they might think that they have missing organs, or they, they could think they're pregnant, but they're really not. I mean, it can show so many ways. Uh, the last one on this slide is referential delusions. Those are the beliefs that everyday events and people have hidden meanings that relate to the individual. So an example of that, so it could be a movie, like say they're watching a movie and they think there's a hidden message in there for them. Um, it could be song lyrics that are speaking to them. It could be uh, maybe a news article that they think is trying to give them sort of some sort of message. Um, they could think that the TV is talking about them or a radio host is maybe talking about them. Uh, next page, grandiose delusions. Those are the belief that they have exceptional abilities like wealth or fame. They might think that they are God. They might think that they're Jesus Christ. They might believe that they are just some religious figure, the Pope or whoever. Um, they might think that they're a multimillionaire. They might think that they're famous. Um, what's another a good example? They might think that they have found a cure for cancer. Then the next one, erotomia, I'm sorry, erotomania is believing falsely that another person is in love with them, often the famous person. So this um, example is believing someone's in love with you so much that you're in a relationship with that person, even though it's somebody so unattainable that you're probably never going to meet. Um, and this can cause, cause serious harm um, because it can lead to harassment, it can lead to stalking. Um, the next one is nihilistic delusions. Those are strong beliefs that a major catastrophe 
will occur and destroy the world. They might also believe it's already happened and that they're dead. So in, in these delusions, uh, so let's just give an example. Somebody might believe that the earth has already been destroyed by say an asteroid and not all mankind is gone. Um, so what they believe this reality that they're in is just an artificial reconstruction and that it's really meaningless. Life is meaningless. Um, that they, it might lead to stopping bathing, stopping, you know, taking care of your hygiene, stopping eating. It can even lead to suicide attempts because they think that life is meaningless. All right, breaking down the five domains, number two. Number two on the list was hallucinations. Those are a per perception of something not present. So it feels real to the person experiencing it, but there's no source for the secondary, I'm sorry, the sensory input that they're perceiving. Hallucinations can happen in any sensory modality, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, and body awareness. Um, with schizophrenia, hearing is the most common hearing um, hallucinations. Those are auditory hallucinations. I've inserted a clip here that I'm just going to play so you can have an idea of what it might sound like to someone uh, with schizophrenia that's experiencing auditory hallucinations. Take a listen. Your eyes are full of disgust. You look the way you smell, you are disgusted. But looking at you and seeing you, they see everything you do, and you are disgusted. You are disgusted. Yes. Stop it. Stop it now. Don't touch that. Stink. Stinky. Stinky, stinky, stinky. Shirt, alert, jerk, like a smirk off your face. You think this is funny, don't you, huh? You think this is some kind of joke? Well, it's not a joke. Not a joke. <laughs> Okay, so we also need to be culturally competent when it comes to hallucinations because some religious beliefs welcome hallucinations. They think that that's a connection with the divine. Um, you know, some religions, they speak in tongues. So that might, you know, we, can, we need to be very culturally competent when looking at hallucinations when diagnosing schizophrenia. Third one on the do, uh, list of five domains is disorganized thoughts. This is determined by how somebody speaks. What comes out of their mouth, their answers to your questions um, is gonna be very disorganized. Um, they might switch from one subject to another mid-sentence. Uh, the answers to the questions that are asked are completely unrelated to the question. And then and this is pretty rare, but we call it word salad. Word salad is just a bunch of random words thrown together um, that make absolutely no sense to the listener. So I'm going to have you ha listen to this video clip. This is somebody that um, is having disorganized thoughts um, who is schizophrenic. Yeah. Like in the daytime, when I got outside in the sun, I used to show my friends saying a damn thing before in the halo. See, like the halo, when I was 19, when I was preaching, I had my child saying, I used to see the light on my shadow on the ground in the daytime. And then now, from, ever since then, it's like the light coming and putting it down on my body, around, around my shadow. It's over my body, but around my shadow, like feel the light, which is your halo, I mean, your, your aura. And that's why everybody can't see that. But if you, if you, if you, if you got some of the drugs too, we say, and now I don't know what for real. I know it's what I see, but I don't know for real or not. And so that's why that's why you see the difference. 
it's like that morning, like she like, or sometimes when I come outside, um, I can see uh, when I look at the trees, the wind started blowing. But we know we got oxygen from the plants and we get them carbon dioxide. And so like the wind needs to blow sometimes, but it don't blow all the time. Like when I'm in the house a long time, it blow real strong. Okay, the next part of the domains are number four, grossly disorganized motor behavior, including catatonia. This may manifest itself in multiple ways from childlike silliness to unpredictable agitation, just unpredictable outbursts of anger to inappropriate behavior, things like maybe stripping down in public, completely inappropriate, right? And also lack of focus. So this page, I am going to play a video clip to show you what uh, somebody with schizophrenia experiencing catatonia may look like. Like a warm candlestick, the body of the patient can be contorted into almost any posture. The patient may maintain the posture for several minutes. Moving on, number five on the list was negative symptoms. This is diminished emotional expression and the lack of motivation or ability to start or continue goal-directed activities. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, so there is further criteria needed. Um, not only do you need to meet two of those domains, um, the sim symptoms need to persist for six months. So they need to have one month of active symptoms from the list of domains, the five domains, with a significant impairment in functioning ability for six months. In addition, one of the two symptoms needs to be from the first three on the list. So they need to be either delusions, hallucinations, or disorganized thoughts. Uh, the next page, the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about a personal experience. Um, symptoms cannot be the result of substance abuse or medical conditions. So I am a recovered meth addict and I was a meth user for many years. And I experienced full-blown schizophrenia, hallucinations, delusions, to the extreme disorganized thinking. I did not experience a motor, a disorganized motor behavior. Um, and, but I did, I thought I had bugs. I thought my house was infested with bed bugs. It was very, very distressful, very. Um, I also had the kind of hallucinations where you feel like somebody's touching you. Every night when I was trying to go to bed, I was all tweaked out, trying to come down, trying to go to sleep. And relentlessly, I got touched by something. I, I thought I was, something was rubbing my leg and it would always happen, you know, maybe after an hour of trying to sleep, something would come out like rub, rub my leg like in a calming manner, but I know now that's not true. But what, I guess what I'm sharing you, with you that for is because once the substance is taken away, uh, I can speak for, you know, from meth and cocaine, once the substance is taken away, the symptoms go away for me within hours. So you cannot, and most people, it's gone within days. They don't have these thoughts anymore. The I mean, it's so blatantly obvious that what you when you, you when the drug's taken away that you know that these things weren't true i used to hear a radio in my ear like a radio playing in my ear uh, and the announcer talking and i mean it was ridiculous i'd run all over the house trying to figure out where this radio was coming from and why did i only hear it in one ear um i'd go out my garage i'd go out my car i mean it was so ridiculous sad actually it was very distressful and I think of how much life I wasted doing things like that trying to chase these delusions and but so yeah schizophrenia cannot be diagnosed as a result of these symptoms coming from substance abuse or other medical conditions then lastly 
depressive disorder with psychotic features, bipolar, and schizoaffective disorder have to be ruled out first before schizophrenia can be diagnosed. The last page I'm going to share is my references. And from there, I am done. And I thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it.